Hola YouTube, seguimos en The Council, tercer episodio, segunda parte. Vamos a ver qué pasa ahora. I don't understand. I spoke to him only recently. Monsieur Perrin has lost his mind. It's obvious. Yet another way for the French to make a spectacle of themselves. Well, once again it has worked. My friends, let us settle down, please. We are all in shock, of course. Let us praise Louis's gesture, anyway. You did what you could. Yes, it was very noble of you, Louis. It wasn't your fault. There was nothing else you could have done. I think everyone needs a little rest. Can you stay a moment? Of course. Louis, I wanted to talk to you a moment about what has happened. All this is tragic, but I wanted to thank you for doing what you could. I wasn't able to save him. You couldn't, Louis. You mustn't blame yourself. It is not your fault. Of course, but... I thought I could help him. I guess it was too late. Don't talk to yourself. Look what you've done. I admire what you did. Who else among all these great luminaries of the modern world even raised a finger? No one. You were the only one who tried to do anything. What a waste. What are your plans now? What do you mean? For the conference. After the disappearances of both Elizabeth Adams and my mother, and now the death of Mr. Perlou, I should imagine that your guests are all packing their bags. This might come as a bit of a shock to you, perhaps because it was so difficult to bring all these figures together, but I am convinced that none of them is preparing to leave. Are you serious? They are all very experienced politicians, and though they are of course affected by the situation, they know full well that such an opportunity will not come again for a long, long time, if ever. They each represent their nation, and know full well that what is at stake here is far greater than the death of poor Monsieur Peru. You'll see. I am confident that they will all be ready to resume the conference. If you say so, allow me to take my leave, please. Of course. You ought to get some rest. Oh, Louis, uh, one more thing, please. What a pity you didn't support me during the conference. I hope I can count on you on the day of the vote. This major project needs men like you, Louis. And you never know, right? Maybe by then, I'll see things differently. Well, thank you for allowing me to believe in that possibility, Louis. From here on, I shall make it my mission to persuade you to change your vote. Be my guest. But... I hope your arguments are very, very persuasive, because I'm not the only one who isn't on your side. Oh, rest assured, I am working on it. Very well. I'll see you later, my lord. Vale. A ver, voy a mirar si tiene algo para coger, pero no creo que tenga nada. ¿Os acordáis que nos cargamos al pájaro? <laughs> no me ha dicho nada del pájaro, menos mal. Vale, esto es lo típico, esto ya estaba. Vale, pues nada, aquí estaba el pobre pájaro. <risa> Sospechará de mí, ¿creéis? Sospechará de mí el asesino de pájaros. A lo mejor cree que ha sido mi madre la que lo ha hecho. Vale, pues vamos a volver a nuestra habitación, que es lo que nos están mandando. Y a ver qué... Que se cuece, ¿no? Your yes is not sufficient. Tell the others for crying out loud. Remember to close my window once you've done my room. This isn't Corsica, you know. I'm freezing. Of course, sir. I'll see to it straight away. Good. Proceed. Monsieur Bonaparte. Sorry, Dorichi. I have no time for traitors such as yourself. I beg your pardon? If you are here, it's because Lord Mortimer agreed to include you. And what's the first thing that you do? You betray him by following Sir Gregory and bending over backwards to turn Washington against him. Oh, I'm sorry. 
I thought I was free to vote as I pleased. I didn't realize I had to vote for Lord Mortimer in order to show my gratitude toward him. Hey, he invited me here to come and look for my missing mother during his high society party. I'm sorry, truly sorry, I don't know all your customs yet. It's just common decency that when invited to a man's castle, you don't go and to pee on his boots. Is it too much to ask? I guess it is. Este Napoleón es pato gilipollas. Hay que decir que somos unos traidores. O sea, no, nosotros en ningún momento les hemos dicho que les íbamos a apoyar. Así que no toque los huevos. Bueno, pues ya, ya que... Bueno, es la habitación del Jack, eh, Jack Perú, así que no... Ahí es donde la habitación de, de una parte. Bueno, vamos a seguir porque... A ver si encuentro mi habitación. <risa> O algo, a ver si encuentro algo. Pero es que es tan difícil encontrar aquí cosas guays. Such as Emily Hillsborough. No answer. Nothing. Emily? Emily, are you there? Emily! Yes. Louis, is that you? Yes, let me in. I... I'm sorry, Louis. I don't feel very well. I'll see you later. Are you sure everything's all right? Are you still there? Venga, a ver si encontramos, vale, la Emily esta no sé qué le pasa, pero no quiere hablar con nosotros. No puedo moverme. O sea, me puedo mover la cámara ahora. Joder. Vale, pues vamos a ver si encontramos mi habitación y podemos dormir la mona de una puta vez. Huh, that's me. Vale. Next time, I'll listen to my mother. Not a day has gone by without something happening to me. What now? Louis, open up, please. Coming, Mr. President, I'm coming. Louis, ah, oh, there you are at last. Yes, I... I just saw your mother. She was accompanied by Emily, and they both went into the Duchess's room. I tried to join them, but I was refused entry. Louis, this does not bode well. Oh, shit. Emily might want to avenge your sister. I must act quickly. You're right, Mr. President. Thank you. Vale, pues vamos a ir corriendo a la habitación de Emilia, a ver. No, vale, por aquí no se puede entrar. ¿Por dónde era, tío? Antes no hemos pasado por la habitación de Emilia, ¿no? A ver. Ya, es por eso no quería. George Washington. Vale, pues vamos a seguir con esto, a ver si encontramos a Emily. O algo que se le parezca. President George Washington. Monseigneur, his eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Joder, al final he dado toda la puta vuelta al edificio. Duke Manuel Godoy. Y, y no los he encontrado, o sea, que estarán aquí. I do believe that's Emily's voice. I can't 
understand what she's saying. Bueno, a ver, lo que vamos a hacer es intentar ir al terrado, a la terraza, a ver si hay algún sitio por donde podamos entrar, intentar entrar por la terraza y ver qué está pasando. Vale, por aquí no se puede. Aquí no hay habitaciones, tío. Pues nada, a dar la puta vuelta. Yuhu. A ver... Vale, aquí. I have to get inside Emily's room through the shit. It's locked. No way. It's too sturdy. Supongo que estará en la esquina, ¿no? Por aquí no se puede entrar. Por aquí tampoco. Por aquí tampoco. Pues será la última. Qué casualidad, ¿eh? Hoy <risa> veo una tía en el suelo y a Emily con una pistola. A ver, voy a mirar el letter from William the Younger, addressed to Emily. It's a present a letter from William Pitt the Elder, addressed to Emily. He was the English Prime Minister. This letter dates from 15 years ago now. Vamos a enfrentarnos a ellos ya. What on earth is... You... Mother? How dare you do this to me? You can talk. After everything I've done for you, you are joking, I hope, right? I gave you my life. That's enough, Emma. Now that Louis is here, you will leave Sarah alone. Cease your revenge immediately. What? What? If you think you're going to... Louis, help me, I beg you. I can no longer reason with her. I am Emily. Quit playing games. I... What? Honestly, don't be ridiculous. No. I am Emily. You are wasting your time. Louis knows very well how to tell us apart. After everything we've been through together. Yes, well... Don't you dare bring him into this. This is between you and me. I ask for nothing more, so stop taking it out on Sarah. I... You prissy little bitch! How dare you! Now that I've told you everything, you want to take my place, do you? You are joking, I hope. I'm the one who told you everything that's been going on while you were away. Go on then. That's what you want, isn't it? You want to kill me. Go on then, shoot. After all the trouble I've gone through to find you. Go on. What are you waiting for? Here, Louis, take this. Wait, what's going- An entire life for this. Go on, shoot. Sorry, Louis, I, I can't shoot her. She's my sister. I... That's enough, Emma. Louis, out of the way. She's dangerous. Don't trust her. What are you trying to do? Louis, out of the way. I am not Emma. Come on, Louis, tell her who the real Emily is. Wait, I... That's right, Louis. I'm fed up with this little game. Tell him who the real Emily is. Why do these things always happen to me? Well, Louis, come on, you know how to tell us apart, right? Yes, yes, but I'd like to ask you a few questions to make sure there's no doubt. Rational and open, Louis. Let's see. How can I tell them apart? Wait, I've got an idea. On the night of our arrival... Who was with us on the wharf? Cardinal Piaggi, who couldn't stop talking. Louis, I already told her about our arrival. I know, because I was there. The Cardinal went up. You felt poorly, Louis, and I offered you my handkerchief. I was there. Right. Let's find something else. Ah, yes. Let's speak about my arrival at the manor.
On the night of our arrival, we were warming ourselves in front of the fire. Mormor welcomed us in a very odd way. What happened? It won't work, Louis. It wasn't Mortimer who welcomed us. It was Sir Gregory. Sorry, Louis. I already told her. Very well. Let's try something else. On the first night, we went up to bed, but I wasn't tired. I went for a little stroll. Before going to bed, I, I went for a stroll. Did we speak to each other during that stroll? A stroll? Through my room in the middle of the night? You call that a stroll, Louis? No, I grant you that. I just wanted to make sure. What did we say to each other at that precise moment in time? I asked you what you were doing there, what you were playing at on the balcony, and if it was anything to do with the Golden Order. And then? Then I suggested you first ask permission the next time you wanted to go through my room. But she knows all that, Louis. I already told her. Don't think you're going to get away with this deception so easily. I can assure you, you're going to regret pretending to be me once Louis has exposed you. Right. I don't think I'll get very far like this. I'll have to find something better. Oh, I don't think I'll even wait until he's finished. Take it easy now. Are you mad, Louis? Lower your arm. Oh, I better act quickly if I don't want things to get out of hand. Come on! She's putting one over on you! Look at yourself for crying out loud. You were prepared to shoot me down. In the secret room behind the study. Talk to them about what you've been doing. Maybe they haven't spoken about it between each other yet. On the night of the disappearance of Elizabeth Adams. What about it? What do you want to know about that night? Before going to bed, we found ourselves in an odd situation. You surprised me searching through Mortimer's secret gallery, behind the chimney. You were looking for clues about your mother. That's enough! I've had enough of this charade! Louis, there's only one way to tell us apart. There's just one thing I didn't tell her about in detail. Too bad for you, Emma. I didn't want it to come to this, but you leave me no choice. Ask her. About you and I. You just lost Emma. I indeed didn't tell you everything about it. Come, Louis. Speak about our intimacy. Very well. Let's talk about us. Last night, when you came to my room, what exactly did you expect from me? Exactly what happened. I was hoping you would share your bed with me. What? Which I did. And it was delicious, sir. What do you mean? It was delicious. You little slut. What did you do? Believe it or not, Louis, out of fear of her jealousy, I didn't tell Emma that we spent last night together. I hate you! That's enough, both of you. Now I know who the real Emily is. It's you, Emily. No, Louis. She is manipulating you. No, Emma. It's her. I know it. Despite all the trouble you've gone to to put one over on me, I know it is her. That's enough now, Emma. You little slut. I don't think you are going to get away with this so easily. You are going to stop your little game right now. Never. I am Duchess Hills. No. Emily? I am the Duchess. But... You don't. I... Dear God, what have I done? See what you've done. See? Louis? Mother! What on earth is... Go away! You must go. Everyone is going to arrive. Louis, what's going on? Duchess, is everything all right? 
Come on, Louis. There's nothing more you can do. But I... Leave us. Emily, what's going on? Mother, go to the crypt. I'll meet you there. I'll be waiting for you. Emily. Madam, I am coming in. It was bound to end like this, Louis. Let me stay with her. Please, go. I'll cover you. Qué movidón, tío. Hostia, qué movida, tío. Dos, bueno, las dos hermanas, una ha matado a la otra. Y no sabemos si hemos acertado realmente. No sabemos si hemos matado a Emma o a Emily. Yo creo que hemos acertado, pero no sé. Vale, por aquí no se puede ir, puta vida. Vale. En fin. Espero no, no, que no nos hayamos equivocado y hayamos matado a Emily y hayamos dejado vivo. Good God, they're all here. They must have heard the gunshot. Where is Lord Mortimer? Can anyone hear anything through the door? Bueno, yo creo que voy a hacer otro lado. No voy a hablar con ellos para que no haya sospechas de mí o algo. Y me voy directamente a la cripta y ya está. Bueno, vamos a ver. Voy a quitar la debilidad esa. Y ahora tenemos que ir a la cripta que no. Que no tengo ni puta idea por dónde se va. Pero bueno, vamos a ir mirando. Ah, vale, mira, ahí está la, la puertecita. Y ahora... A ver si completo la, el laberinto a, a la primera. No. Eso me queda muy claro. A ver... Por aquí no es. No. Puta vida. Vale, ya está. Ya a ver qué nos cuenta la madre. De, de todo esto que ha pasado con Emily, Emma y ella. Louis, at last there you are. Mother, wait a. I... Come, we have to be quick. No, wait, Mother, I... Time is running out, Louis. First, we must... No! That's enough. I won't go a step further unless you explain to me what is going on here. I'm begging you. Talk to me. You must trust me, my son. You are not ready yet. You are the one who should trust me. Tell me what's happening. You would never believe me. I came all the way here for you. Now I've found you. I'm ready, Mother. If only... Louis, I have always taught you to keep your mind open and logical. I know you are going to find it hard to believe, but what I am going to reveal to you is entirely true. Many years ago, I found out that demons really do live among us. I beg your pardon? And that they can influence our thoughts. Mother, Listen to yourself. I know you're exhausted, but for crying out loud, listen to what you're saying. Demons? <laughs> what next? An ancient monster with a head like an octopus? What do your demons look like? Have they got horns and a, a pointed tail? No, these are not creatures with billy goat's legs. Forget your Christian folklore. Imagine them more as parasitic spirits. They possess their hosts and direct them from inside. Parasitic spirits? Yes, they are capable of going from one body to another as they see fit. And two of them are present on this island. Right, so let me guess. Lord Mortimer and Sir Gregory, right? You felt it too? No, even if home does look the part. But I don't know who else could do it, given that we're on their territory. Many years ago, well before you were born, I crossed paths with one of them. Since then, I've spent my life trying to find it again. When we recovered the Alizif, I was persuaded that Von Burchard was working for this demon in one way or another. But I thought he would hand the book to a middleman during this conference. That's where I made an error, an error that could well turn out to be fatal. The one who Burchard was meant to give the book to was none other than the demon in person Mortimer. Not to mention that Holm had sent Volner to get it for him. Holm and Mortimer are demons? 
They both seem to disagree about many things, but I'll admit I never knew exactly why. There are many of them, Louis, not just those two. Mother, have you any proof to support any of this? Of course, but you do too. You had everything laid out in front of you. Didn't you notice anything? Mother, I shan't follow you down that path. I wouldn't be doing you any favors. Logical and open, Louis. Tell me then, how can anyone own properties all over the world for centuries by always signing documents with the same signature? Well, I can find ten other explanations less eccentric than demonic possession, Mother. How come the Mortimers have had only one male heir for each generation since the Third Crusade? Forgery, family rights, where they get rid of the daughter. There are dozens of less extravagant possibilities. How could one man motivate so many future leading figures of the day on his silly island without anyone finding out about it? Even the Golden Order isn't capable of that. Well, he's simply better than us, and he's welcome to it. You refuse to open your eyes, Louis. You've lost your objectivity, Mother. I saw him. Wh what do you mean, you saw him? I was 20 years old. I was young and carefree. I traveled the world in search of adventure. In the Persian Gulf, we came across an ancient grimoire that became unlocked. Composed of seven parts, each one was a book in itself, set in a sort of metal armor that structured the whole thing. When all the volumes were brought together, they formed a single book. On my return to Paris, I set to studying these pages. I spent all my days and nights studying them. Oh, I can imagine you doing that. But the writing was in a language I had never seen before. Developed well before Sumerian, in my opinion. So I got the idea to form a small occult circle composed of all the major names in the occult world to see if anyone else could crack it. And you found no one. And I found someone, Louis. I found him. Or rather, he found me. He was young, charismatic, he was flamboyant. You mean Mortimer? He was a veritable mine of knowledge. I showed him the book, and he was able to decipher a few passages. We spent several months together studying the pages. He helped me understand certain passages, until I realized that he only translated a few parts for me. But I had aroused his interest. It was too late. How so? I mean to say he manipulated me. He used me, and in the end, he stole the book with all its secrets. Did he ever go to your place? Not once. At least I don't think so. But before disappearing, he proposed a pact between us. He proposed that I follow him and let him teach me, allow him to bring me up. And you accepted. Please don't be stupid. You don't make deals with the devil. After that, I spent my whole life looking for him. Three years later in Berlin, I just missed him. In London, I lost six members of the Order in a chase. In 1741, in Tunisia, I found a sect of fanatics who had crossed paths with him once. 1741, in Poland. 1749, in India. Eight years ago, in Venice. We agreed never to speak about what happened in Venice, Louis. You agreed, and that was before you spoke to me about demons. Wait, the baby we delivered, you and me? That night, in Venice, did he have anything to do with Lord Mortimer? The child was his son. We stole his son? Are you insane? I always thought we took him to save him. That was the case. It was precisely to save him from his father. Need I remind you the mother died during childbirth? What became of the child? Later. For the moment, that is not the key issue here. Once we found the Alizif in Paris, I followed Von Borchert's trail here. I didn't think it would lead me straight to the demon. It was careless of me. He toyed with me for a few days, until I caught on, until I saw him as he was. But he had no intention of letting me leave. 
We are all his pawns, Louis, and if we don't want to spend the rest of our lives turning round in circles here, we must absolutely get off this island. All right, can we move on? Wait a minute, one last thing. I want to know what happened with Elizabeth Adams. Louis, we haven't time for those details. I'm sorry, Mother, but I want to know. She was one of the receptacles for these monsters. I met her parents when she was born. One of the demons got inside her. The demon used her to spy on her father, John Adams. He is one of the founding fathers and vice president of the United States, you know. Mortimer possessed her? No, I don't think it was Mortimer. Her father, John Adams, hired me to tend to her, but the evil in her was too deep. In spite of the various treatments I tried on her, I never succeeded in getting it out of her. It's not something I'm proud of, Louis, but I had to try everything. Mother, did you kill her? Of course not! Don't be stupid! I had no interest in getting rid of her. I want to know what happened between you and Emily's sister. Great responsibility often brings difficult choices, Louis. That's all you need to know. All right, but you're not getting away with it so lightly. Once we get back to Paris, be sure I won't be letting it go. We'll see in Paris, then. What did you negotiate about the Alazif with Volner? Absolutely nothing. I managed to pull the wool over his eyes until I found a way to flee. What was going on with the cannons in Tuscany? It was nothing. Since when does the order finance wars? The cannons for that Bonaparte fellow? Listen. Once in the lion's den, I did whatever I could to appear legitimate. So yes, I pretended to be interested in Mortimer's project about a young military man who was seeking funding for a foundry in Tuscany. Between you and me, if buying China would have enabled me to escape, I would have signed without hesitation. Samuel Ritter du Chois, you wanted to send me a letter about Godoy. I wanted you to run a check on Duke Manuel, but frankly it doesn't really matter anymore now. Godoy is just a pawn like the others. He is not the one I was looking for. You know, I found your package under a wharf plank. As a matter of fact, I needed it yesterday. I wasn't expecting anyone to take it. On the evening of my arrival, Cardinal Piaggi came looking for you. He was determined to give you a letter. More of his lists. Louis, I think I know what's in that letter, and I beseech you to believe that it is the least of our worries. We can sort that out later. Are you going to tell me what happened to your hand? Better than that, I shall show you. Good. I think that's about right. We shall speak about it once we get back to France. Great actions for humanity have been decided by demons for centuries, Louis. They are playing with our destiny. We are their slaves. And it's time for it to stop. By the way, what was Mortimer's project at this conference? He demands that the Spanish hand over Louisiana to France. Oh, knowing him, it won't stop there. We should do our utmost to put a stop to Mortimer's plans. But for the time being, there are more pressing matters. Are you going to tell me why we're here? There. That's why we are here.
Bueno chicos, pues vamos a dejarlo aquí, si os parece bien, hemos acabado otra parte del episodio 3, la segunda parte, espero que os esté gustando, dale un like si os está molando, suscribíos si no lo habéis hecho todavía, y nos vemos en el siguiente vídeo, adiós.